Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back to Untitled D&D Podcast, as I'm yes. now calling it, because why not? Uh, last time we did our Artificer, Artificer, however you pronounce it, I pronounce it correctly. Uh, now we're doing a Druid, um, Circle of the mm -hmm. Stars. Uh, first Druid one. First Druid one. Um, Chad. I'm, lo I'm looking forward to the next time we do a Druid one, when I can say we've come full circle. A... To Circle of. He's done it. We're is. not doing a Druid one ever again. Even if it comes up in another future <laughs> UA, I'm not allowing that. Mm. Um, yeah. What's your experience with Druids? I've played a Druid. I only played a Druid to level 2, though. You did, and then I threw it my in the experience, hole. My experience was a lot of 5-foot corridors as a <laughs> as a large creature. Yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of squeezing, a lot of disadvantage of attack rolls, and uh, a lot of advantage against people me. Of, getting past. Yeah, blocking people. Um, as a DM, my experience I'm was... Basically, just making a bunch of stuff so you could use it in Roll Twenty. You know, all the different yeah. beasts and stuff. I gave you a list of my demands. Mm -hmm. These are all the creatures I am. It was weird because you gave me like you cut out newspaper to do it. I figured you could just type it in Discord, <laughs> but you actually sent me like a ransom yeah, note. Yeah, like a ransom <laughs> note. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I kind of like Druid. Um, well, the thing is, I, I couldn't send you like a photocopy of the PHB or anything because that's like copyrighted material. So mm. I had to, I had, had to, to cut out. out. I, I had to cut all the letters separately from magazine. Yeah, from from the PHB itself, just from, from the, the same PHB, bits. Yeah, I, I actually went through a few PHBs. <laughs> yeah, doing it. it's expensive but well worth it. Um, yeah, it was definitely worth that. I only played it to level two though. Yes. <laughs> anyway, Circle of the Stars. I uh, I do like Druid. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I have a I lot of history cool. with Druids. From World of Warcraft, I played Druid for a long time, and I like the nature, mm -hmm. the beast shaping, um, that kind of thing. Um, and I think it's cool. I think the main problems I have with Druid are one, it's a pain in the ass to have lots and lots of different beasts well, at your disposal, yeah. wide shots at your disposal. That's a bit just like a you know uh, technical reason why it's a bit annoying. And also mm. similar to Monk, and again, this is possibly our um, failing. Um, Druids are hard to diversify. I find. Sure, I can I can see that. They're a little they're a little one trick pony, aren't they? Mm. They even, like nature. Even in the P PHB, it says you're allowed medium armor, armor but not metal armor. Obviously, you yeah, can ignore that, weird. but it does say in the PHB like druids would not wear metal or something like that. Yeah, it's one of it's one of those strange flavorful things that they add in there. And <laughs> yeah, I think it might just be down to like how you know how I. Envision Druid and how I can't really get out of the similar to Monk. Although someone did point out, um, I apologise, I can't remember your name uh, from the comments. I could look it up, but I'm lazy. Um, you can play a Monk similar to a, a Witcher. Yeah, kind of thing. you basically an alchemical. Um, I don't. I'm not. I'm playing enough of the Witcher, but I think it's like an alchemical yeah. thing. You go through a process, and that's where you get your key, um, yeah, which is a great idea. That's and a good idea. Very that good idea. I think is um, you know the kind of stuff that I would look for in the comments of you know, help me. You know, diversify my thought a bit more. I mean, I do have yeah. an idea for a druid um, that isn't like pure nature, um, but it's mostly just kind of there was a backstory, and then they became a druid because someone found them and taught them it, and that's how they kind of became na and they became naturey from that. So it's still like diverted sure. into nature. It's very difficult to come up with like you know a swashbuckling druid because you still got to have that <laughs> link to nature for the for the yeah. wild shapes, right? Yeah, it is. I I'm trying to think. Because like it, it's a pretty broad idea that you're just a, you're a spellcaster that gets your powers from something natural, as opposed mm. to sorcerers, which are typically something supernatural, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so some sort of primal thing going on, but yeah, I, I kind of get how wild shape is a little does lock you into it a a bit, and that you you kind of have, you don't necessarily have to use it that way, but you kind of are a shapeshifter, and if you're not using your wild shape, it's a bit. Um, you're kind of like not utilizing something that's part of your class. A lot of the other subclasses do give you things that you can use in place of your wild shape, mm. such as this subclass, I think. Right? Yes, this one does, yes. yes. Um, which is which is good, I think. I think that's one way that you combat that. Mm, definitely. Because not everybody wants to play a natural spellcaster who can also turn into animal. Yeah, that's very true. And I think that's the kind of stuff you can do with animal stuff. Um, I think the main problem, obviously, with animals is animals are nature by kind of design. They don't really have society, mm. which is kind of makes you more a hermit kind of thing. So, you know, you could be 
Yeah. Um, you know, you only transfer into a wolf because you have like a wolf pack that you're part of or something. Or um, the only thing I could really think of is like you're a zookeeper, but even then, it's you know it's still animals and it's still basically preservation, right? It's still yeah. nature. And you could definitely lean more into you know plants or animals. You don't have to do both, which is also good. Um, well, and some of the subclasses about... do that. There is there is no subclass that really leans heavily into plants specifically. There's stuff that I mean, land. It goes into the land in general, mm -hmm. but nothing specifically goes into plants. There's a spores one that goes into fungi. Yeah, fungi, and but I not. Uh, I think this was even plant. weird because it goes into the stars and like starlight and you know tracking the patterns. Which again, yeah. again, it's definitely like you know ranger and druid. I guess are kind of interlinked to that nature thing, and obviously using the stars sure. to navigate and as a natural, natural, useful thing is obviously a common occurrence. Um, I wonder where this first kind of came from because obviously uh, the the balance druid and and WoW is really inspired by that sort of mm. celestial part of druidism. But outside of that, I don't feel like I've really seen that theme explored in um, other games. I guess if you think, other... if you think about what a druid is in reality, right? I think of like Stonehenge. Sure, yeah, like yeah. that is definitely kind of you know there's something going on there with terms of like nature and possibly like the stars or maybe it's like a map or something you know i guess mm. druids like themselves are kind of this mysterious group of people who can use nature for their own gain mm. that includes the stars you know thinking about it um there's kind of not really a good uh good way to do something like a shaman for like a WoW star shaman, obviously mm. we have a lot of experience as well. In D and D, I think a druid is probably the closest you're going to get with it, and also like kind of stuff like a, a witch doctor maybe as well. Um, if you wanted to play a witch doctor, I'm not sure what class you would really play. I'm not. I don't think you would play a warlock, for example. No. But still, I feel I feel like a druid might be the closest you could get. Possibly, yeah. Because it wouldn't really be wizard. Because it's not uh, really a learned thing, is it? May I, yeah. Maybe it, sorcerer. It, but Maybe. then you'd have to have got your ability from supernatural way, and witch doctors are kind of basically just voodoo. Maybe yeah, you could, you could, you could possibly do that again. This is the main problem. You could do it with a cleric, probably. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, you could, you could do a shaman with a cleric as well. You could do anything with a cleric, which which makes cleric too good. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that is one of the strengths of cleric is that it is a very, it's a pretty versatile yeah. class in that way. Like, but. You know, if you wanted to play a shaman, you could probably do a, a decent job of that with druid. And then the wild shape thing is kind of weird if you if you didn't want to play a shaman in that way. I guess I guess wild shaman has ghost wolf form, right? So you know, you kind of <laughs> sure. Well, we're very thinking sorry. specifically about shaman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think kind of going back to how cleric is too powerful. Um, I, I know you don't watch Critical Role, but there's a character called Caduceus, who is a furbolg. Um, he is a uh, he's a cleric. He's a grave cleric. But there's mm. a lot of like druidic stuff in there as well that he does. Almost to the point where he's sense. like a, a better druid than a druid because he doesn't have to do the wild shape stuff. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting just how how that, how, how that weird. I, like, I can see that being a problem yeah. uh, uh, it, with with druid, right? Yeah, it's weird how cleric has become so easy to fit everything into, and I'm not sure yeah. why that is compared to anything else. It's just because cleric has so many diverse options that you think mm. that kind of broadens your perspective. While with druid. I guess I guess the thing I guess the thing with cleric is there's like your um, core feature I guess is what, what you could say which is like you know, channel divinity and being a holy man. Mm. It, it's super broad because there's so many different gods. Whilst with a druid, yeah. I guess your quote unquote core feature is wild shape, which kind of limits you to yeah. wild stuff. Uh, same with fighter, you know, fight is such a broad thing because it's like you hit dudes, like you could hit dudes in a thousand different ways. Um, and wizard yeah. as well. Uh, even wizard, I guess, is is definitely a bit more, you know, reduced down to a learned person because your main thing is your spell book, and you have to somehow fit. It's having to fit that bit into your backstory and into it to make sense, right? So you have to fit a you know a spell book in there. You have to fit wild shape into there. You could fit a god into anything, really. So that's kind of I guess where yeah. that comes from. I mean, when you when you have an idea for a kind of natural spellcaster character and the cleric fits it better than the druid does, then that's probably a problem with the druid. Yes, I think so. I think I think a lot of that would be... I think a lot of that comes with the wild-shaped stuff, and I think a lot of that is mitigated by some of these UAs where they give you other options to use the wild shape on. Um, yes. And I think there's even... Isn't there even a... I think it might be one of the variant things where you can use your wild shape as find familiar instead, which I think is also a good idea. 
Yeah, that was one of the very ones. Actually, it's I've got it up here. Wild Companion. Yeah, which is probably like a a, a good replacement for yeah. it. That being said, it's it's an in addition to the way you can normally mm. use it, not not in place of. And Find Familiar is one of the best uh, spells in the game already. Yeah, especially at a low level. Yeah, I, it's, it's, uh, a, it's just one of those things, right? Where um, if, cool. you, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. You, you give, yeah. I mean, allowing you to use your wild shape to, uh, as a temporary find familiar is a good use of wild shape, I would say. Yeah, especially at low level, because like at, at level two, you can't turn into a bird. You can't you know? turn into level eight, can you? No, and you could you can bring up a cheeky cheeky owl or something as you're familiar. The one thing about druid that is interesting to me, at least, is that it has. Now, I did. I went through all the spells recently. I want to say that Druid has some of the more or most unique spells available to it. Mm. I think Wizard has the highest number, but that's just because I think Wizard just has a lot more spells overall. Yes. So it does have more unique ones. Uh, Druid's spell list is smaller, but I think like percentage-wise, it has probably has more spells that are not usable by other classes. Don't quote me on the exact numbers there, but it does have a lot of pretty specific ones. I don't think they're all that crazy strong, to be honest, but they're pretty thematic. Yeah. I, 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 I looked it. through recently as well, because I was thinking yeah. of making a druid, and yeah, there's a lot of kind of interesting ones in there. Um, and a lot of unique ones, like you say, that don't come up anywhere else. Yeah. The, the druid does have the uh, an ability to do some things that other classes just can't do, mm -hmm. which is always nice. Yes. Um, that, that's usually what I look for in a class. It's like... What what can I do with this class that other classes just can't do at all? Yeah, that's very true. Should we look at Circle of yes, Stars specifically? Say, uh, another prerequisite here: um, I still haven't released the Clockwork Sorcerer one because it needs a lot of work post. It needs a lot of post work um, that I need to do some editing for. I just don't have time. Like, You're not it, missing much. Not missing much. <laughs> it, it wasn't. It, it's not a good class. But um, the Clockwork one, I you know, I was very much into like Clockwork stuff. I also very into stars. I think I mentioned this at the end of last episode. Yeah, I do like stars, starlight, um, kind of that kind of thing. I really enjoy the theme of just the night sky. Is such a, like a cool thing to me. Um, so again, hope uh, if this is good, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be leaning a lot more into it. If it's bad, I'm gonna like really be heavily like, oh, I wish I did more. Um, but having read through this before, I think this is pretty good, um, or at least interesting enough. Yeah. So we'll start with the kind of intro here. Uh, an ancient lineage, the Circle of Stars, allows druids to draw on the power of starlight. These druids have attracted heavenly patterns since time immemorial, discovering secrets hidden amid the constellations. By revealing and understanding these secrets, the Circle of the Stars seeks to harness the power of the cosmos. Many druids of this circle keep de detailed records of the stars and their efforts on the world. Sorry, their effects on the world. Some groups document these observations as uh, megalithic sites, which serve as enigmatic libraries of lore. These repositories might take the form of stone circles, pyramids, petroglyphs, and underground temples. Any construction durable enough to protect these circles, sacred knowledge, even against great cataclysms. So straight away there, you know, stone circles, that's kind of the yeah. Stonehenge I kind think of we, stuff. I think we fought a petroglyph in Dave's campaign. I, th I, think, we, I think we did. <laughs> what was that? It was, it's, it's, a, it's a periton. A periton, that's yes. not one. Um, so right off the bat, I, you know, like I said, I like the night sky and kind of the space stuff. So cosmos, constellations, uh, those are just cool words to me. I just like the way they sound. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. one of my favorite words is starquake, which is an earthquake on a star. Um, oh, it's just such a cool word. Um, uh, it is a cool word, and and there's nothing else in D and D really that embraces that theme so mm -hmm. far, right? That I can think of at least. Yes. Um, yeah, nothing really goes into. The stars specifically. I, the closest you can get is probably some sort of divination magic, uh, yeah. but I, I wouldn't say that a uh, divination wizard is particularly like like um, themed towards the stars specifically. I think you could play one like that. Um, again, though, I think the thing here is obviously this is a really cool design. I really like this. Um, wild shape doesn't fit into it much. Like, it definitely leans into mm -hmm. the kind of caster druid more than uh, it's kind of casting druid and like i guess uh kind of druidic circles of like people coming together to write down lore and put yeah. up you know monoliths of uh you know mysterious monoliths that. that kind of thing um, i want to play a welsh druid who 
<laughs> built Stonehenge, you know, it was part of building Stonehenge. No, no. Is Stonehenge in Wales? No, Stonehenge is in England, but these stones were in Wales. Were from Wales, okay. That's, yes, why, that, that's why it's so strange, because the stones were transported from Wales as the blocks yeah. across the country. I think it's in, like, it's not too far from, I think it's like, I think it's just north of London, I think, Stonehenge. No, no. Uh, yeah, I, I don't actually know. Um, I could be completely wrong. Never been. Uh, Apparently not even that interesting, to be honest. <laughs> I can't imagine it would be that interesting, no. Um, <clears throat> uh, but yeah, th th that's the sort of thing we're going for here. And I like it, and I want to kind of see how they uh, how they implement that mechanically. Yeah. So Again, if you're coming in... What's the first in... feature? Sorry, I'm just going to... One quick more thing. If you're Go coming ahead. into uh, a, a campaign, new campaign, you're thinking about playing this... Speak to your DM. Maybe they can come up with like some you know interesting sites like Stonehenge, which you can discover and work stuff out. Because that's again, that's an interesting, you know, ancient things to explore. Something that not really gets explored, I don't think much. Uh, you know, you get a lot of like old ruins, uh, which will have you know some weird stuff in it. But actual like I guess Stonehenge related to stars kind of things, you could chuck some of those in there. It might be quite interesting. You know, actually, on that topic, I really do like um, superstitious stuff a lot. Uh, playing The Witcher, you, you see a lot of that, where um, characters will do things that are... Well, I mean, like a lot of it is kind of like fact in that universe. Some of it isn't necessarily fact, but a lot of people will act out in superstitious ways in, mm. in attempts to... Uh, to make something happen and uh, with my like current character in your campaign who's like uh an expert on like ancient folklore and stuff uh, i kind of I, I wanted to to bring some of that in but it, it is difficult to do it mechanically so i kind of like i like it when a world has that sort of stuff going on in it where there's like a, a sense of mysticism beyond just uh the kind of like arcane magic that wizards clearly understand there's i like the kind of superstitious stuff existing there as well uh, it's definitely something i've been trying to put in my kind of world building and this is definitely more of a world building dm thing like just putting random stuff in there that is interesting and can be explored a little bit which will give you some history of the world um but not anything like major just something that's quite nice to put there like i think the most recent example is that church that that ruined church hmm. um yeah. you know there's a mystery about why why did the archaeologists go there and get build that the straight graves. away graves. who is the um Deity. Who, who is the deity? Why are all the graves right next to each other? Why are they so like crap? Those kind of things I think are quite interesting. And if you want to explore it, you can. But if you don't, you don't have to. Maybe you know something will come up and you think back and go, "Oh, it could be that." You know, it's that kind of stuff that I like doing. Hmm. Um, possibly now at this point, at the cost of like, th there's a weird balance in that. Maybe we can go to this something something about later. So essentially, I've gone from basically giving you the big bag evil guy straight away to you know we're ten episodes in or ten sessions in. And there's been no big bad evil guy. You've just been like following yeah, stuff and doing stuff. Um, and I think that's yeah. fine. But there's definitely a point where I've been, you know, thinking like, um, all right, where, where, how, where do I go from here? How do I get us onto like a main story? Um, I guess there is a main story at the moment because there is stuff going on, but it's still a bit like yeah, there's stuff going on, and we're kind of aware of it as well. Like there yeah. is a antagonist, antagonistic group that exists mm. currently that we're aware of and we've just barely interacted with. And we're soon going to be getting to the level where that's the sort of threat we're, we should be taking on. You yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. It's, it's just, it's just anyway, aside, of, aside from that, that nobody understands about us. Yeah. That, that's definitely another a future conversation about like you know, world building, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, star map. Should we yeah. look at that? Yeah. Let's look, let's look at star map. You, so this is second level. So when you pick up the feature at second level, you've created a star map as part of your study of the heavens. The map is a tiny object and can serve as a spellcasting focus for your druid spells. You determine what form the object takes, or you can determine what it is by rolling on the star map table. So there's six options here. A scroll of living wood that aligns with heavenly bodies. A stone tablet with fine holes drilled through it. Speckled owlbear hide tooled, and raised with to tooled with raised marks. A collection of maps bound in an ebony cover. A crystal that projects starry patterns when placed before a light. And tempered glass discs that align to depict constellations. If you lose your map, you can perform a one-hour ceremony to magically create a replacement. This ceremony can be performed during a short or long rest and destroys the previous map. You can cast Augury and Guiding Bolt spells without expending a spell slot and without preparing the spell. Provided you use the star map as the spellcasting focus, you can cast a spell from the map in this way a number of times equal to a wisdom modifier, and you regain all expended uses when you finish long rest. What do you think of this map? Uh, the, the first thing that... I, it's not worded. I'm not sure if it's correct augury requires a monetary cost spell um uh, component component but it's not consumed yeah but it's not consumed 
but I don't know if it is consumed when using the style map. If you're, using, if you're using this as part of the spellcasting focus, then I assume that it takes the place of the material. That's component. what you're I right. Though, it's, it's not. It's not uh, well worded there. It's not. It doesn't mention it. So I'll, I, that's what I'm going to say. I like this. I think this is really cool. The star map table. I think. Th Three of them are... They're all, they're all really different. Yeah, I think is... three of them are boring, though, and I wouldn't ever really use. Three of them are really cool, well, but again, this is just me. Which ones do you think are boring? Uh, I don't like the Scroll of Living Wood. That just seems a bit boring. The Stone Tablet is... Eh, it's all right. Um, and the collection of maps spanned in an ebony cover. You know, it's just drawing maps. I love the crystal that projects starry patterns when placed before a light. I think that's amazing. Mm. Uh, I love the tempered glass discs um that you can align to make constellations and i like the owl hide to be honest i kind of like that one although again i put that in kind of the more boring one i guess i just like the crystal that projects starry patterns just because i kind of want one <laughs> at this I mean, point they are all pretty different i mean i i kind of like the i mean if i'm thinking of like playing a, a stone a stonehenge style druid i like the idea of having like a very simple stone tablet mm, that's definitely. like not explicitly magical or mysterious in itself but like the fact that such a mundane object can be used in such a yeah. defining know, way adds you, like an extra level of mysticism to it, which I like. You just see your characters like look into the sky and just like hold this tablet to the sky, just stone, and then you just go, oh yeah, we need to go this way. Or, you know, later on you start to mm, you yeah. know, you use augury doing that and it's like, oh, you know, bad idea. And everyone's just like, what the hell are you doing? What's going on? Um, I think I just yeah. love the starry patterns, the crystal one, just more. But I had an idea as well because I was I was looking at this um, this subclass earlier. Uh, you know, tarot cards would be pretty cool. Like you lay tarot cards down. Yeah, sure. And sure. they're 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 not real. They're not like proper tarot cards. They all or they are proper tarot cards, but they all have a night sky in them. And you're not looking at like mm. it's death or whatever. You're looking at the sky and using that or something. I don't know. There's there's they they, they do call it a map, but there's enough differentiation with with. Uh, the six examples that they give that I think they are really opening uh, opening you up to kind of yeah. come up with your own thing, for it, which is which is good. I feel like there should be more of these little um, things in subclasses, these little six yes. examples. They've been doing that recently with the UAs, and I think they've been doing yeah, they, with it. Yeah, they did it with the Barbarian and the Monk one. They were both really good. Um, they did it with Clockwork Soul as well. Yeah, and I, I, although I didn't like that many of them. <laughs> I, I like this because it goes through def various different styles. So obviously you've got, you know, Living wood, stone tablets, and you know, Albert Hyde are definitely more natural. You know, you're a nature person. Yeah. Collection of maps is, you know, you could be a learned man mm, yeah, uh, who's yeah. using paper. And the crystal and the tempered glass, you could be, a, you know, someone actually crafting like fine glass discs. You could be a fine craftsman. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, you, you could be somebody who works at a university in like, uh, in like an observatory, uh, this, like some very much part of civilized society, which is not typically what associate with druids they are usually just associated with being like off in the in the woods i guess you could you, know, you, you could even like if you go if you went that far like you're an universe person studying the stars but you have a form of lycanthropy like anthropy where you turn yeah. into like pure animals I mean, so when sense. you turn into like a with the, bear when it's useful part, yeah. like you're not actually controlling that you just suddenly are a bear and you're like oh shit <laughs> or i'm a bear right. but i'm i can think properly what's well, going on the, the stars decided they become the stars align happen. fear their portent yeah Hmm. Augury is a cool spell. We both really like Augury a lot. Mm -hmm. I use five lot. uses of a second level spell a day. I mean, up, up to five because your wisdom multiple don't you get to five. It's cool, but of course, Augury gets worse the more you cast it each day. Yes. So it's not quite. Uh, like Gunning Bolt, first level spell. Gunning Bolt is one of the best spells anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, for. Hello, it's a cleric specific one. It's not usually available to druids. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think druids get much in the way of um, direct single target damage as from, from first level spells normally anyway. I think they're pretty limited. No, I guess I guess you're looking into. Um, I will just look this up. I get. I guess they're balanced around wild shape, right? And you get more damage from. Sure. Being I mean, there. if you're playing like a, a land one, you're not really using your wild shape to deal damage. Only only moon is using their wild shape to deal damage. That's true. But ice knife is about the best you're getting normally. I mean, they've got a couple of AOE ones, but they don't have like a, you know, a magic missile or a guiding bolt equivalent. So this is pretty nice. And it makes sense as well. Guardian Bolt fits with this thematically. I would probably reflavor it. So, well, then again, I guess you could make it be a bit more like a, a Moonfire sort of yeah. thing, right? Yeah, star related. Star uh, Moonfire, yeah. It's already pretty close, to be honest. It does radiant damage, and that makes sense. <clears throat> and it you know, provides advantage. I, I, it's definitely a very thematic spell that fits with this. And five uses of that a day is really good. Because my, my worry with Guardian Bolt is like, 
even though you get four first level spell slots a day eventually, it still kind of feels like a waste of one that could be used for something else. I don't know. Usually yeah. that's when I'm playing a character who has shield, which is always like, I'd rather save them for shield in an emergency, or I'd rather save it for absorb elements, which definitely, is something druids do get. Definitely when you're getting later on, you're saving it for shield, absorb elements, um, or cure heals as well, as well, cure wounds, healing word, that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, I definitely use Gunning every, Bolt sometimes. Every guiding, but... bolt, every guiding Bolt you send off is a, is a healing word fewer that you've got yeah, to bring exactly. something back up. Um, and while I do like Guiding Bolt as a spell, obviously it's a decent amount of damage um, I and mean, it gives that advantage. You are right, it does start um, wearing down those first level spell slots. You can you know, start upcasting it if you wish. Um, but, yeah. you know. So uh, you cannot cast this with spell slots afterwards, as far as I can tell, and it's not on the Druid spell list, so you can only use this five times per day, and then you've got your normal first level spells afterwards. So this is pretty good, and I think it's going to hold up pretty well later on. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't specifically say you cast it at first level, although I assume you, you have to. And normally it says like you, you cast... Uh, when you cast a spell this way, you cast it as if you're casting it at first level or something. Yeah, I assume right. because it doesn't expend a spell slot or anything, you, it is just yeah. It, it normally does specify for that, but yeah, I, I, I assume that uh, it is that. Yeah. Uh, so probably not going to hold up too well later on, but early on, this is this is super good. I like it. I like the theme. Um, I like I like it. I just like it. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, for, first of all, this this feature is super thematic. We we both like the theme of it. I think this fits in well with it. And the actual mechanical abilities it gives you are, are really nice as well. Yeah. So that is cool. I'm still not 100 percent sure on the map part. If I wanted to be like a, a celestial diviner sort of person, I'm not really sure what I would want as my like focus outside like, of it specifically being a map. But you know, you can change it to whatever. Yeah, right? I mean, it doesn't even have to be like a, a map map that you've mapped. It could just be like something you stare like a crystal ball you stare into. Um, yeah, I was even thinking of Crystal Ball, but that that's still a little bit too uh that's a little too arcane for my taste, yeah. I think. So, I mean yeah, you, you, that's, that's what you could probably do with it. I, I am complaining about it, but I'm also not <laughs> providing anything I would prefer in its yeah. place. So, the I mean, yeah, regardless of it, I think a map does make the most sense if you had to pick a default thing for it. So yeah, that's cool. I'm yeah. happy with that. Starry form? Starry form. Uh, you gain the ability to harness Constellation's power to alter your form. As an action, you can expend one use of your Wild Shape feature to take it on a starry form rather than drawing swimming into a beast. Whilst in your starry form, you retain your game statistics, but your body takes on a luminous star-like quality. Your joints glimmer like stars, and the glowing lines connect them as on a star chart. This form sheds bright light in a 10-foot radius and dim light for an additional 10 feet. Form lasts for 10 minutes or until you are incapacitated. Whenever you assume your starry form, choose which of the following constellations glimmers on your body. Your choice gives you certain benefits while in that form. Chalice, a constellation of life-giving constellation of a life-giving goblet appears on you. Whenever you cast a spell using a spell slot that restores hit points to a creature, you or another creature within 30 feet of you can regain hit points equal to 1d8 plus half your level in this class. Archer, the constellation of an archer appears on you. You gain a bonus action that you can use to make a ranged spell attack, hurling a luminous arrow that targets a creature you can see within 60 feet of you. On hit, the attack deals radiant damage equal to 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier. Or dragon, a constellation of a wise ancient dragon appears on you. When you make a an intelligence or wisdom check or a constitution saving throw to maintain a concentration on the spell, you can treat a roll of 9 or low on the d20 as a 10. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> So you don't really get much out of it b before you choose one of these extra things. You just shed just light. Shed light, yeah. Um, I will say it doesn't last ten minutes compared yeah. to wild shape lasting an hour. Yeah, I will say as well. Um, we were talking about how wild druids, obviously, you know, balanced druids have a lot of star related stuff. They also have a star form. They you they can do. change Boomkin to be basically a celestial version of yourself. Instead, I prefer that. Uh, I do not because fuck you, <laughs> Boomkin. <laughs> Uh, Boobkin is life um, but yeah just just again going back to kind of this idea of star and star form seems to be permeating through several different kind of um, media properties so there's definitely something obviously there's something historical yeah. somewhere where this comes up but probably in an older version of D&D &D that, <laughs> that maybe we're yeah of. clearly we're, we, you know, we're, we're not veterans on of this uh, hobby um, I don't think yeah. we, neither of us were even close to being alive um, when it came out you know I mean I was pretty close to being alive I think you were still 13 or 14 years off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh, yeah, so you don't get much, you know, outside of this. And obviously shedding light is also kind of a down 
uh, you know, can be a it is it can be a downside. Yeah, can be a downside if you're trying to be stealthy or you know, be trying to not point out exactly where you are. You know, but um, yeah. What about the actual but, things? Okay, so when are you using each of these? So chalice, I mean, what are you getting here? You're getting D8 plus, and you're at level one, two when you're getting this is D8 plus one, so that's about 5.5 up to 14.5 at max level. Extra HP mm -hmm. to you or another creature when you restore hit points. Um, I mean, you're you're able to throw out your, your guiding bolts pretty fine uh, without consuming any spell slots. Uh, so I think you've got like, more spell slots open in the first place for, for healing spell. What about, would this work with Goodberry? Oh boy. Whenever you cast a spell using a spell slot that restores hit points to a creature. It's, that's a bit weird, because the good berry itself is the thing that restores the hit points, right? The spell yeah. just gives makes the good berries. So I don't think it'd work. Uh, I imagine this will be rewritten to say, like, when you cast a, a spell that targets a creature. Yes. Otherwise, that would be absolutely insane. <laughs> How many good berries do you get from good berry? Oh, I don't know. It's, uh, ten, isn't I'll it? look it up. Well, I, I think it's ten. ten. But they only restore uh, like one hit point each or something. They only restore one hit point each. But then it's one plus one D eight plus Yeah, whatever. so that would that would be pretty insane. I don't think it's I don't think that's how it works. Work like that. Uh but like I mean it's it's pretty nice if you if you need if you throw a healing word and then um <clears throat> get someone up and then heal someone else for a bit. So you can get two people up at once, which is which makes that spell even more efficient than it normally is. Probably heal yourself up with it, which is nice. But healing in general is not great in fifth edition. No. I don't know what combats you, what combats you go into choosing this, unless everyone's really low on health to begin with. Um, it could also be just kind of how you design your character. You design your character to be more of a healing, um, sure, leaning into the healing more again. But I, I think if you're kind of going for just kind of a, you know, straight down the middle. All round character. All round yeah. druid. This probably isn't the one you're going to be using, unless. Then again, like all of you're probably not going to be using all of them, any of them, unless you're really thinking about something. There's probably not one default one, except maybe archer. If you've got nothing else to do. Yeah, some... I think the archer. Well, uh, then again, the, the, I think later on you start taking the dragon one because concentration yeah. on spells, especially when the spell slots start getting higher, is super important. Yeah. But yeah, thinking more about chalice here, it's like you, you kind of you want that healing available when. You're going into a fight when resources have been expended and people are low already. But if resources have already been expended, you probably don't have your wild shape in the first place. And you probably are low on spell slots to chuck out healing anyway. Mm. And you don't want to use this before short rest, even though you get your wild shape back before short rest. Uh, even if it was to save some hit dice, it, you're still casting a spell to, um, to get this, uh, this extra additional effect. Yeah. Uh, and this occurs when the spell is cast, so you're not getting this every time the healing spirit heals, for example. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you're only getting it once per, per spell slot. And it doesn't scale with the spell slot. No. Um, so I, don't, I, I really don't see why you necessarily do this. I, I like, like I said, even with the healing word, being able to bring out two people, you have to choose this when you get into the combat. Unless you're halfway through combat wild shape into this. <clears throat> Which is a nice option to have, I guess. Yeah. You might, you, again, you, you, you don't have to wild shape until um, you're partway through the combat, right? So you could wait until you're halfway through the combat, see how the combat's going, then decide to wild shape. and Because you can wild shape and then yeah. also use a um, bonus action heal, because wild shape is yeah. an action. So this could be a very you know clutch get yeah, people up be. thing. Um, I think that's that's about the extent of Chalice. Yeah. Uh, it's a clutch get two people up in one in one it's, turn. It's situational. Somewhat. I think early levels it might be better because obviously you know, one d eight plus half your level is a yeah. decent amount of someone's health pool compared to like the levels we're kind of playing. And, and it, it, five plus where that's not really that much. Half, half your level just doesn't scale into, when it comes to healing. No, <laughs> you know. Um, plus that d eight, yeah, it just doesn't scale very well. Okay, well Archer, um, you get a, a free longbow attack. As a bonus action. As a bonus action. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, you know, yep. again, wild shape and do this straight away. Wild shape and, and do that straight away. And you can also um, do a cantrip with this as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, what cantrips are druids getting? They can get firebolt. You, right? can do, you can do a, a main spell with this, right? 
Yeah, yeah you can do it. I mean, so I'm, I'm just thinking, like, in terms of like, what if you if you use a wild shape for the next ten minutes, what's your bread and butter? If everything's just going according to plan, it's probably just because <clears throat> that's what your bread and butter is. If, you, if if a combat isn't particularly threatening and you're a wizard, you're just throwing out a fireball every turn, right? Yeah. Um, uh, they do not get fireball, but they do get they get like thorn width shillelagh, which is a thorn melee width. thing. Yeah. Uh, it is a ranged spell attack, so this this doesn't work well with shillelagh. Um, shillelagh. I, I could call it shillelagh. shillelagh. I'm sure that's not pronounced right. I think it is um, <laughs> shillelagh. Uh, and because of guiding bolt being a ranged attack as well, you're probably going to be a ranged character. I mean, this this centralizes well with guiding bolt because uh, you would gain advantage on this hit if yep. you decided to hit with, with it after. Although providing advantage to someone else may be better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, an extra longbow attack as a bonus action is uh, it's super good. Is it better than Wild Shape? I mean, it probably is better than Wild Shape for combat. Outside of Moondruid, who are explicitly doing that, you know, other druids aren't Wild Shaping for, for damage. You're no. just using a cantrip, probably. So this with a cantrip, or this with Guiding Bolt every turn, or whatever other spells you're casting, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It's a good default one to go to. <clears throat> and then Dragon. Well, Constitution saving throws being treated as a 10 uh, let's if you're fighting a lot of small things this is really good because you they need to do a certain amount of damage to you for you to be able to fail with saving throw in the they first place over 20 over 21 actually 20, you 22 at 21, least yeah. to make you to make you do it to get 11 20, right 20 yeah 22 at least yeah um you, which is what you said <laughs> yeah. um so obviously at higher levels this becomes less useful because you're probably going to be very consistently hit for 22 plus. Then again, I'm not sure. Like on higher levels, if you're fighting like a, a fighter, a high level fighter, they're still just hitting you for lots of attacks in the same turn, right? They're hitting you for five smallish attacks that are probably not going to do 22 plus each. Yeah, that's, that's the thing, so right? That's, that's pretty good. Not that you can take that much damage, but. Constant, uh, anything that helps you maintain concentration is super good, yeah. especially depending on the spells. I don't, I don't know druid spells well enough to know which druid spells are like the the things you're really uh, happy for. And you get you get this at second level. So like, what are what are the the first level spells that you're concentrating on uh, as a as a druid? Like, what's it called? Fairy fire is that concentration? Fair, I think yeah, fairy fire is that like a, there's like an entangle one maybe. Yeah, entangle, um, and I think fairy fire is probably yeah. a go-to one. I, th I think one kind of there. regardless of like what you're casting, the fact that e e even if you have a zero constitution modifier, which you probably don't, you probably have constitution is your second best thing in, in for this uh, class. Um, yeah, like you know, let's say you have you know plus five constitution or plus f four, let's say. Um, you know, they have to now start hitting you with um, you know, 30 damage to be able to break your concentration. You know, it's... gets pretty... Yeah, it's silly. true, yeah. I, for I forgot that, obviously, it's it's the roll on the d20, not the... Not uh, the actual, because you... And yeah, like, yeah. Do, do you get concentration saving sorry, proficiency as a druid? I don't think you do. Constitution? Uh, let me double check. But it's, druid, it's, yeah. Sorry, could you No, they get wisdom and intelligence. Okay. Can you get constitution you, from somewhere, you, like a feat? You can get it from a feat, yeah. The resilient feat can give you proficiency in constitution saving throws and plus one gun. Well, there you go. That's, you know, suddenly yeah, adding proficiency really to this, well you know, you get to higher levels and suddenly they need to start hitting you with like 50, 40, 50 damage just to make you save. Probably 40, let's be honest. Doesn't doesn't stack with uh, something like Warcaster because advantage doesn't make a difference if you're treating a roll as, as mm -hmm. 10. But it would work quite well with that uh, Artificer uh, infusion where uh, like a robe that you wear can uh, you can uh, choose to ignore a failed con save once yeah. per turn as a reaction. Uh, so you, you could like you could hold on to a spell pretty long with this. Mm -hmm. um, in in our practice, I'm not sure how often breaking concentration is the thing that fucks up a spell. Usually, it's they make a saving throw eventually, and it only worked for like two turns because they you know inevitably they're eventually going to save for whatever was happening. But it's not like a hypnotic pattern. If you hit a lot of people with that, that's I, again. I'm not sure if that's something druids have, but I'm just thinking about concentration in general. It seems like a it seems like a strong thing. Yeah, 
And then we didn't even take into account intelligence and wisdom checks, which are, we use investigation and perception pretty often, and survival is quite good as well. If you're traveling for a day, you can pop a, um, a, a wild shape to make these a 10. I'm not necessarily sure if that's quite as good, like a 10 on I mean, investigation. I mean, you're, you're but if, you've got a high, if you've got a high survival, or, oh yeah, then again, your passive perception's already a 10, isn't it? <laughs> well, well um, I mean, even so, like, your passive perception, if it, your passive perception is ten. Bear in mind, your perception is mm. then. If you roll a ten on perception, that's be, then goes beyond. I guess I don't know. No, no, it's the no. same. Your passive perception is as if you had rolled a ten. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um. Uh, but like, and then again, I guess there is passive investigation as well, judging by what some of the feats say. Mm. Uh. But like survival, for example, if you if you just want a smooth a smooth day of travel, you could pop a wild shape every day to. Because you're gonna, you may have high survival. You probably will have high survival playing a character like this, right? Navigating by the stars and stuff. Assuming you navigate at night. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it, w- it would make sense that you might use this just to just burn this for a safe day of travel. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, you're doing nothing else but travel is probably worth calls, right? Yeah, like uh, if you can guarantee five five wisdom plus three. Uh, Proficiency that around about level five, then that's that's eighteen on a survival check. That's yeah. probably going to get you through most places. Um, yeah, I, I mean, archer is the one you're going to go to by default. Dragon eventually, if you if you know you're going to be concentrating on something specific. Do druids get polymorph? They probably they must get polymorph, right? Mm. What am I, a druid? <laughs> I, th- I think regardless, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so regardless, like, it's just it's just good. It is, yeah. But both those ones are good. The healing one is it's kind of. Not so great, right. but like we were saying, uh, it basically means you don't have to use a wild shape at all for beast stuff. You could ignore that entirely, um, mm-hmm. if that's how you wanted to kind of play it. And it's fairly thematic. Um, I can already imagine, like, you know, the start that the, the translations that are appearing on you, just like, um, you know, you're a hooded character, and your face is suddenly like you can't see the face anymore. You just see this constellation instead. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff you could do with it. And again, I like that. Mm. I, I like cool stuff. Because I am a edge lord, uh, so and you get all of this at level two. So that's that's yeah. a pretty strong level two, I would that's say. A strong level two. At level at level two, you're getting five guardian bolts plus a longbow and bonus action, uh, like for a couple of combats a day or, or whatever. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's very strong. Okay. Cosmic Omen. Cosmic Omen. You learn to use your star map to divine the will of the cosmos. When you finish a long rest, you can consult your star map for omens. When you do so, roll a d6. You gain one of the following possible omens based on whether you rolled an even or an odd number on d6. Could also just use a coin. Let's move on. Um, mm-hmm. When you when a creature you see within 30 feet of you makes an attack roll, a saving throw, an ability check, you can use your reaction to roll a d6 and add the number to roll to the total. When a, or, or just wheel. Woe is the opposite. You can subtract d6. Um, you can use your reaction a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. That's interesting. It's a little like portent, right? Which yes. we're both big fans of. Uh, portent uh, is one of my favorite things. Yeah, and and it's it's pretty it's super thematic without stepping directly on the toes of that. Mm-hmm. It, it fits with it really well. Stars and, align fear their portent. You can just use that line every time you do it. <laughs> yep. And like when you're when you're rolling your portent in the in the morning, as whether you know, like okay, I rolled uh, a, a three and a five today, so I know that I'm going to be able to impose bad uh, rolls on someone. So it's kind of the same here. It's like okay, I rolled odd. That means today. Five times I'm going to be able to subtract. A Today I'm going to from... fuck shit up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that changes the way you play as well, which is mm. nice because that doesn't really happen very often. Like each morning, you're like, okay, I'm going to be able to make my ally stronger, or I'm going to be able to make my enemies weaker, depending on the day. I don't, I really don't feel that you have that sort of thing happen to your character very often, no. where where you randomly change the way you play on, day, on a day to day basis. And, and I, I like this as well because you can build this into your character quite easily. You wake up and suddenly you're feeling really glum. So, like, oh, what, what's wrong? So, like, oh, the stars, they aren't. Stars not in yeah. position. Can't do it. Not today. And you're kind of, you, you know, you, now you're throwing the D6 of tracts. You wake up with a, such a, you know, you're happy. It's like, oh, stars. Stars aligned, my friend. Let's uh, let's let's help out. Let's, you know, make everyone happy. Yeah. The stars are aligned. Um, I like I, it. It's also, it's also not just, it's not like, Okay, I'm either hi- hi- uh, so hindering my allies today or helping, uh, sorry, hindering my enemies today or helping my allies. It's not just the thematic difference, but also like, woe is going to make um, spells with saving throws from your allies a lot better mm. than normal. So you might switch your focus, your party's focus, like, okay, we're going to use more uh, debilitating effects on the enemies because we can subtract um, 
a d6 from their saving yeah. throws. Oh. It's a reaction. It is a reaction, so you can it's only do this once per turn. But, so, but yeah, okay, we're more likely to have the wizard use hold person now. Oh, this is level six. So maybe yeah. like, I don't know. You eventually get hold monster. More likely to use that because we can take a d6 off of uh, a saving throw, and that's pretty good because like saving throws aren't are not that high. The DCs, right? No. They get up to. I don't know where they get up to, but a level they six. They can get quite high, but not level they're, six. They're like 17, maybe a level 16, six. 16, 17. 16, 17. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's just... Um, and again, you could even, again, roleplay-wise, just like... But yeah, like, star, stars are saying that, um, you know, debilitating yeah. things are going to yeah. be more debilitating today. So, you know, start, mm, yeah, yeah. start breaking I'm your legs. Because stars are saying I, I almost bad feel like, I feel like that is... Even that that captures the flavor even more than Portent does, right? Because you are changing the way that you're you're playing based on the feedback of well, well, Portent is slightly different. Portent is the way I played Portent was I basically had like a flash forward of like a yeah, sure, um, sure. What's it called? Not predetermined. um, What's the thing of our destination? The uh, Uh, what's the fucking word? uh, (laughs) Things with a P, right? It does. Precognition. Precognition. Yeah, you have a precognition of like something that's going to happen. Like m- the way I played it was like you have a flash of this precognition, and that's where the portent comes in. Like you say, oh, dodge to the left, and that you then give the enemy a one, or like swing low, and then that then you give your friend the twenty or whatever. Yeah, that's kind of how I play. That this is definitely more. You've consulted the stars, <laughs> the stars, and and then you're basically like, um, you know, using the power of the stars to kind of guide. Stuff. I, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I get, I get, I'm getting lost in the source. I, I do really like this. Yeah. Though. Yeah. That, that is. I mean, that, that makes sense as a way to play Portman because it is. It is kind of strange to have because you know at the start of the day, like how your Portman dice went, and like, how do you express that to your allies without saying like, "Oh, I think things are going to go badly today," or "I think things are going to go well today," or something like that. I'm feeling confident about one thing or the other because either way you use the dice, it's always going to be. Um, a good a benefit to your party, right? Yeah. So, it, it is a, a kind of strange we roll assess in the morning to express what's happening then. But but here I think it it fits a lot better. Mm-hmm. So I actually I think I pre- even though it's not as powerful as important, I do think I prefer this feature uh, thematically more to, more than important. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the name Cosmic Omen, cool name. Again. Yeah, cool name. Uh, just like it. Full, full of stars. Full of stars. Full of stars. This, this boy is full of stars. Very, very simple. When wh- While your starry form feature is active, you become partially incorporeal, giving you resistance to bludgeoning, pissing, and slashing damage. Done. That's it. That's all right. I guess. It's a bit boring. Uh, yeah, but... It's boring, but, you know... They can't all be winners, and it, and I kind of like it. Again, you you become this, like, incorporeal. Yeah, yeah, you could then, you could then lean more towards, like, the WoW-style way. Like, you just... Your entire body, like you can see through, it, it's just stars within, stars inside you, like it's full of stars. I mean, that's what that's, this, this is. This, that's a meme, right? That, that name, full of stars. Not sure what it's a meme for. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing that meme. Uh, well, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe it should be a meme. Maybe we should make it a meme. <laughs> maybe it's next month's meme. Maybe it's ahead <laughs> of its time. Um. Uh. Yeah, I mean, like you're you're playing this as a ranged character. Your hit dice isn't huge, so Druid. Druids can be pretty tanky, but because of wild shape to mm-hmm. begin with, um, just because they've got so many extra hit points from that. So at least it gives you some more survivability, I guess. But that's about as much as you can say. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It, 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 it you can't complain about that. I'm just not necessary. And it, I guess if it's thematically, but in terms of mechanically, what this class is doing, I don't really feel like it, it hits on a. No. I don't really feel it makes me feel like the class fantasy of this is getting. No, it's very, you know, it's fine. Very basic, very standard, but you know, it's like it's it's. Fine. It's a good feature. It's a strong feature. Yeah. Um, Star Flare again, cool name. Um, your connection to the cosmos allows you to conjure bright starlight as an action. You conjure a burst of of light in a thirty foot radius sphere centered on a point you can see within one hundred and eighty feet of you. You can immediately teleport each willing creature in the sphere to an unoccupied space within 30 feet of it. Each creature remaining in the sphere must succeed on a constitution saving throw against your spell DC, or take 4d10 radiant damage be blinded until the end of your next turn. Um, nothing for a pass, I guess. Uh, once you've used this action, you can't use it again to finish long rest until you expend a slot spell slot of 5th level or higher to use it again. So again, we're doing this um, long rest or spell slot deal. 
Yep, which is good. Um, I'm into that. <clears throat> so you can kind of consider this as, as a fifth level spell. How yep. would it stack up against other fifth level spells? Of course, it's a little better than that because you get one use of it per day, regardless yeah. of spell slot consumption. Um, um, I, regardless of how strong this is, I think this is really cool. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> is it just because you can teleport your allies? I, I, th I think it's just like. I just like the theme of it. I just I know it's not really there's not really much you know how how are the you know how is reading the stars helping you fire a massive star blast at someone? It's not. But it's just fucking cool. <laughs> I just like the ability to be able yeah. to like imagine you're surrounded. I, imagine the the problem we had in recently where you know our, our wizard pharaoh needed to fireball uh, all the things mm. in the room, but he couldn't. He had to hit us as well. That, but we also get to teleport you all out. Side, yeah. Like, it, it, it is level 14. It is level 14. It? It's a fifth level. You know, it's late in the game. Um, but, you know, 30 foot radius is pretty big. 120 feet is a pretty decent range. Uh, you could use this to save allies. You could use this to do damage and blind people. It, It's just cool. And Starflare is a cool name. So everything about this I like it is, is cool. cool, even if it's not that strong. I don't, actually, I don't know how strong it is. but I don't think it's very strong. Blinded yeah. until the end of your next turn is not great. The amount of damage for... Not just for like a fifth level spell, but that amount of damage for this point in the game where you have seventh level spells available to you, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, yes, it's pretty low, and they don't take half damage on a save on a yeah on a successful save. Yeah, uh, is is not great, but I think you mostly use it for the the teleporting your friends. I mean, that mobility is super good. Yep, being able to select everyone within a thirty foot sphere and then teleport them. I mean, what's that up to like? 45 feet away maybe from where they were before it's a pretty it's a pretty big because that's like a it's like a 60 foot radius essentially anyone within the center 30 foot radius can then be teleported somewhere else within 60 foot radius yeah of that. um which is good because when when shit hits the fan can you, can you teleport yourself actually yes i assume uh, so um each willing creature. Each willing creature yeah thank you, you. On like space. yeah so it's a nice kind of oh shit button for when when things get very, when the positioning gets very bad, um, it feels quite late in the game for that. But we've never played to this level, so I don't know how yeah. important positioning is at that point. But I can imagine if the wizard gets cornered by something big, <laughs> that this is yeah. a pretty useful thing to to do. In terms of what it does damage wise, it's not fantastic. In terms of what it does thematically, what do you reckon? I, I, I find it a little bit strange, to be honest. But... I I understand where they're coming from. Obviously, you need to have something like this kind of to get involved and do something a little bit more fun with like the staff like stuff. I can definitely theme this like, you know, you're, you're a party member, you'll get surrounded, suddenly you're like teleported through the stars and then you appear like back on land. Um, hmm. And you look around and like there's, all, everyone's just kind of stumbling around blind. It, I, you can definitely kind of, I can kind of theme it a little bit. It definitely doesn't fit in the theme of that they're going for like, you know, reading the stars for, um, you know, for information and stuff. Yeah. But... It's pretty cool. <laughs> that's, that's the, the the main thing is I just think it's cool. Um, yeah. And like, it, it's it's one of those spells where if I was to design a a spell that hasn't really got you know a equivalent, this is the kind of spell I would design. Something that you know like yeah. The, the, it's basically yeah, like you're right. It's a no shit button. Um, I do like having features that allow you to do things that other people can't do, and this is typically not a thing you can easily do in fifth edition. Is yeah. like in the middle of combat, just teleport people around there's no like mass you know mass dimension door mass misty step mass um thunder step which is basically what this is yeah. right? um i will say this the, the one thing i don't like about it in strange thing is the fact that there's no um pass state it's just failure yeah, and this otherwise nothing should. happens which is a little I feel, bad it, for this it might be an oversight i imagine if this gets published which i wouldn't be surprised if it did have they said this one's getting published? I think they said they were publishing something recently, I, didn't they? I'm not sure. We could double check. I think this is something that will get published. I think. I guess we're. I, I guess we're kind of moving into overall discussion of this now a little bit. But... I, I, I feel like they said the armor and this and something else was getting published, but I can't recall what Faye the other one was. Um, I could be. I could be uh, completely wrong. Yeah. But... Um, but yeah, I think kind of i feel like they would put that in it's, yeah. it seems like an oversight to me i feel i feel like yeah one that's an oversight i feel like yeah i think this is kind of the one they would print i think this is a design space they haven't explored much um and i think apart from this last one or these last couple which are 
uh, cool but not super thematic. Everything else I think is really cool. I really, really like this. Yeah. I think if I were to, you know, the question we ask is, would you play this? Um, if I were to play a druid, this would be the one I play, to be honest. Oh, really? Um, I have. Yeah, no, I can see it. I've looked into making a backup character for um, our campaign, which I'm playing. Um, I'm, le- I'm leaning towards this as one of them, to be honest. Makes sense. I have an idea for a Kenku. Um, so oh, no. Starts with, um, <laughs> but it, it needs a bit of work. But I, I, I just, you know, reading this again, it's just like, you know, Kenku has that beak. Imagine, like, across that beak, instead it's this, like, star depiction of, like, a dragon over it. That's so cool. Um, it is pretty- I will say, like, as a player, um, I pick what I like to play based on the coolness factor rather than mm-hmm. anything else um, and just what I kind of create with the, with the concept. So Forge Cleric, I think, is really cool. Um, I really liked the uh, Divination Wizard. I thought that was cool. Um, and this, I, I think this is really good and really cool. Um, and I'd The nice thing is this. the features that we like are the ones that come early. Yes. As well. I'd, uh, rather, I'd rather it be that way than the other way around. And I'll say, if, usually the way we play, if like, your character dies, you get a character of equal level to come in and join the party. We play uh, yeah. Milestone xp as well so um we're level five i think so you know if i die around this level i'm right next to cosmic omen and this is kind of the the, you know all of the stuff i would want is like right there then so yeah um yeah uh, i really really like this what about you what do you what do you think yeah i like it a lot as well uh one one kind of issue with this for me and i think it's something that happens with a lot of very specific subclasses that um go for a theme that isn't really represented in the game much is you're you're this star you're this star man you're this waiting in starry sky. boy and for the most part all of your spells are plant based spells you know there's still there's still spells that are doing druidy things there's yeah. not uh, you can reflavor them you can reflavor them not, yeah just there's just... still not enough spells that support this theme to, for me to feel like you're constantly doing um, astral kind of stuff. Yeah, unless you were to like properly go into the uh, you know reflavoring aspect of things, I think you might be yeah, right. Yeah, and, and again, stars and kind of the the astral you know, astral again a really cool word. Um, the astral stuff, all that stuff is in a design space that's not very really well very well explored. I found some like homebrew stuff around like you know black holes gravity stuff you know astral canon and stuff like that really cool stuff that i would really really like but yeah i think you're right the, the kind of design of this that you could definitely reflavor a lot but it would take some work um mm. like you've done with your your art, artificer um artificer. Yeah. Uh, which are, again the artificer reflavor stuff is really really cool i really like it um so i could definitely you know see myself putting the work in to reflavor this stuff you know, based around like how how is the star map working? Like, I hold you know this light up to this crystal. How does that cast the spell? That kind of thing. There's a lot of interesting stuff around here. Um, yeah. I just I do look at some things. And I think okay, if I wanted to cast speak with plants, which might be a thing that I use quite often, it mm. it, it feels a bit it does feel like a bit of a strange thing for an individual guest. Polymorph makes sense, like because the moon is so heavily associated with lycanthropy in the first yep. place. I think. I think that one fits quite easily. But I'm trying to look at like what are the powerful spells that our druids getting, and how do you how do you flavor these to be astral related? I guess speak with plants. I could I could really flavor as well. You um you moonbeam is a thing that already the, exists. I'll tell you what my problem with the, with this class is now is I can think in my head. Yeah. I thought in my head. Oh, how do you reflavor this? Oh, what you would do? You, you speak to the plant, and then you look to the stars. Everything you have to do is at night, <laughs> in my mind. Um, yeah, obviously, you have this star map too. as well. Um, so you could put the star map down, and that would basically like show you what the stars are doing above you if you know mm. it's daytime or if you're on the ground. And you could use that as kind of your communication method. Um, basically, you speak to the plant, you look at the stars, and then whatever the plant replies, you basically read it in the stars rather than the plant replying to you. That mm. would be how I would reflavor that. Polymorph, obviously, like you say, you set up your... Um, star map you again i'm doing the tempered glass and the crystals for this one and you like rotate it until you find the moon um and then you point that at them to polymorph them um or again you know with my tarot card idea you pull the right cards out to you know hmm. i don't know i don't know some th- some thematic issues i i think i definitely agree with you it is a shame that this one is so based around something that's only seen at night where you don't 
your the majority of your party isn't going to be operating at night typically, yeah. unless you have a very specific party that's catered to that. Uh, and if that ever does come up, Stardew would be a great thing to play. Also, like it would be strange to play a character like this in the Underdark. Mm -hmm. took place there because you don't have access to the sky. It would be strange if you went to another plane of existence. I mean, I think a lot of like characters who get the power from something usually still makes sense if they're in another plane of existence, especially like deity related stuff. Or, oh yeah, because they're on like, related plane of stuff or patrons and, and things like that. But like, if you're on a different plane of existence with the stars are different, or even if you're on a different planet in the same plane of existence, it is a little strange. Um, like if you got locked in, if you got you know I. I just off the top of my head, if you locked into a planar adventure for like eight months or something, and uh... Uh, it was not eight months long, how day it was like <laughs> how long was it? It was it was it was like four maybe. It wasn't that long. I definitely. Oh really? Oh, okay. it, if it was eight months, I apologize because I don't didn't want to be that long. <laughs> I don't think it was eight. Months. I don't think it was eight months. I think it must have been probably like four at most. I think it was like six months since we leveled or something. Is what I'm thinking of. But we leveled sometime before that. Maybe. Um, um, again, I apologize. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I think but even like, with the thematic issues, yes, there are some. I would still be happy playing this. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, so would I. But yeah, I think you're right. Again, again, it's it's the kind of down to the fact that you know, druids have so much kind of base stuff associated with the, with the wild shape and the plant stuff and all those kind of spells that mm. you know grow stuff. Um, that it's very difficult to kind of then become you know a stargazing, learning from the stars kind of person. Yeah. You could definitely fit that into other classes, but I think with work um, and kind of, you know, a little bit of, of, of wang jangling, you could definitely make this fit. And I definitely would. A lot of wang jangling. Yeah, and I definitely, as a player, would make try and make this work because I, I, I really, really like this. This, unlike the Clock of One, hits all of the notes that I want to see from a star based class or subclass. It's got, mm. you know, reading the stars, it's got. You constellations appearing. You've got star magic blasting people. You've got you know portent stuff. It's it's yeah. I I really like this. So I, now that I'm looking at this, I, I'm thinking like usually when I when I pick a subclass, in addition to like all of this uh, other stuff, like I wanted to make thematic sense and stuff as well. I also like to think, okay, what am I picking this for, and like what does this allow me to do that kind of like. What's my niche? Like, what am I excelling the party in? And why am I picking this subclass to do that? Um, and I try to think, like, I, I think Cosmic Omen is pretty nice. I, I think that is the kind of the, the thing I base this around. Um, but, like, if I wanted to play this kind of themed character, something themed around um, kind of divining the stars, is this the best option for it? Would I be better playing a, a, div a, a divination wizard? kind of reflavoring that a bit more yeah um, true that's very true because like if i if i did, i said before like you could play a character who's like working in an observatory in a, a little more civilized place if i was doing that i'd probably play a wizard do that so that was my character concept i probably did that instead of this so i still feel like it's i have to be more of a you know stonehenge druid kind of person yeah to fit into this um again this goes back to I, our conversation about you know class first subclass second you're a druid mm. first who also looks at the stars rather than i've also heard a stargazer who can transfer I've stars. Heard, yeah yeah I, I have heard some people say that they would like to see a cleric based around the domain of fate and i think if that came up as well eventually then that would be something that really competes with this too um so yeah, I, I think if I wanted to play a druid, <clears throat> I could see myself picking Circle of the Stars. If I wanted to play a, a divine, a, a divining uh, character. astrologist character, I'm not necessarily sure that this would be my top pick. Although I probably would be. It probably would be. Uh, but n it's not as on one side as I would expect it to be. Uh, I think it's good though. Yeah, yeah good, good, good class. Uh, you could even. You and know, I would play it. Play this as a joke character, go into astrology and say, ah, you know, your star signs aren't right. Sorry. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, Mercury's in retrograde right now. We'll have to call you back. Sorry. We'll have to call you back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it for, for, for this. Have you got anything else? Yeah. Uh, none that I can think of. No, no, I'm pretty happy. With the, these become a lot easier when we like the class because we just go through it, go, yeah, I like this, and then move on. <laughs> 
I, I mean, I will say, like, the reason, probably the reason I would play this if I played a druid is because I don't really like any of the other druid subclasses. I think it's got some pretty weak ones. Yeah, that's us. Uh, we, we haven't really made any direct comparisons to what other druids get at each of these levels uh, for the, the first time. It's a little harder with something like Moon because theirs is just so based around Wild Shape to begin with that it, it's difficult to compare these two things. Um, and then, like, I was even thinking, what other ones to be compared to? Land, Shepherd, Spores. There's a few others, but none of them I've ever really. I started from Moondred, which is very popular. None of them have really jumped out to me as being crazy interesting. No. No, I, th I think you're so, right. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing whenever I've looked at Druid is I've never really been, you know, wowed, wowed by anything. Um, but this one yeah. kind of ticks a lot of boxes. I just want to you. You just want, you want a clockwork Druid next. That's what you want. Well, I want a clockwork class that's not one a sorcerer and B sucks. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you know I, 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 I'm just a strange person let's not let's not bring the clock really stuff again no, I, i'm just a, i'm just an odd person who knows what he likes and will kind of go hard on that stuff. like he likes clocks he likes stars um yeah I, I i think i think my very final point is if you have played wow and you know star or get Etrus, and you haven't played wow go watch the star or get Etrus fight because it's so fucking cool <laughs> and that's where i you know that's yeah. the kind of theme i like where you know in that fight you start in like this small room and then the walls fall away and you just see the stars and then like he brings the walls back and he reveals another star like um kind of scenario of like a planet being frozen then he bring, brings it back pulls another one out sees a planet being destroyed it's it's just like that those visuals are the kind of visuals i love um, yeah and that's why i think i would play this purely for that kind of stuff um again like well, also, I, that character was very much a mage slash wizard yeah that, that is true dude. um and i will say you know stuff like starflight i like i like that just because i you know that's cool again um yeah. Like I say, it doesn't matter how weak this strong this is, the theme is just good enough for me. Yeah. So is this is this the next character you want to make then? It's on the list. I've got three or four backup characters right what, now. What, what are what are your backup characters currently? Uh, I have a um, a half orc fighter, a battle master. I wow. have a I have this. I have a Kenku oh, stars druid. I have. Oh, what's that? I have to check my notes now. I had a paladin. I had a watcher paladin, but I wasn't sure where I was going to go with that. Um, yeah, that one was a little tricky because um, I like the again. We, we've discussed watcher paladin. And we really like that one as well. I found that one a little more mm. tricky to kind of work out what I wanted to do with it. Yeah. Um, and I believe I wanted to try a um, uh, fathom of the deep. Uh, oh, you did keep mention that one. I, I need they to were, read that. Before. They they were the, they were the four things I've got at the moment. Lurker and Deep. Uh, Lurker and Deep, that's right. Um, What's the next one we're covering? Uh, the next one we'll be covering will be uh, Fey Wanderer Ranger, which will be a very strange one because Ranger is a very strange class. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it might be one that maybe we have to look into a little more. But as of now, as of the recording right now, I think we're expecting another Unearth Arcana soon. It's been about a month since this one came out. This yeah, one came out. Spread. You know, in six days, this one will be out a month, so. Yeah. Anyway. All right, well, we'll 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 do that one at yes. some point. Thanks for watching. If you like this, you know, like, comment, subscribe, like YouTube stuff, and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.